Today in the news we got port smash, a new ash, and some RAM issues. That last one didn't rhyme. Anyways, what's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. CPUs have had pretty bad luck this year with all of the vulnerabilities that were discovered. Thankfully, most of those have been patched with a little bit of a performance hit. Well, researchers at the Tampere University of Technology in Finland and Technical University of Havana in Cuba have found another one last month. They call it Port Smash and it is classified as a side channel attack. It doesn't exploit an inherent flaw in the system. It actually analyzes timing, uh, power consumption, electromagnetic leaks, or even sound to gain information that may help break encryption and recover data that the CPU has been working on. A simple way of thinking about a side channel attack is this. You have a password and let's say it's boot, B-O-O-T. You guess A, the computer checks and it's wrong. You guess B, the computer checks and it's wrong again, but it took a tiny bit longer to check because the computer saw that B was right, but the second character was wrong. Thanks to the timing difference, you can add a second character so you check for B, A, and so on and so forth. Of course, it's not that simple, but this is how it can analyze timing. While this vulnerability has been found in Intel processors with hyper-threading, it requires frequency scaling and turbo boost to be turned off, so I wouldn't be worried about it since pretty much everyone has those features enabled. Moving on, the Pixel 3 seems to have some issues doing two things at once. Now, I might be exaggerating a bit, but many users have experienced some issues while running Spotify in the background and, let's say, taking a few pictures. The Spotify stream would just close without warning. This seems to be due to the Pixel 3 having some RAM management issues. It would close whatever process was in the background to free up some RAM space. Some might blame the 4 gigabytes of RAM since a lot of flagship devices these days come with 6 or 8 gigabyte, but rest assured that 4 gigabyte should be plenty to do whatever you want on your phone. This does seem to be some kind of software bug and Google said that they will fix the issue in the coming weeks. Then we have Samsung, which teased their foldable phone once again with an avatar this time. On Twitter and Facebook, the company changed their profile picture for a while for a folded Samsung logo. Apparently, the reveal is going to happen this Wednesday during their developer conference where they will talk about their latest innovations in VR and AR, their latest product updates, and Bixby. Then we have some Blizzard news. With the announcement of Diablo Immortals for mobile this weekend, the studio was expecting some backlash, but not to this degree. Alan Adam, the studio co-founder, told Kotaku that the truth is we have multiple Diablo teams working on multiple unannounced Diablo projects, even after announcing Immortal. I've never been a hardcore fan of Diablo, but I get how a mobile release of anything can make some people sigh. The thing is, it took more than a decade between Diablo 2 II and 3 to be released, so how about we let Blizzard do what they gotta do? I guess most of the rage comes from the fact that the game will probably include like in-app purchases and microtransactions making it a cash cow for the company and we all know how we feel about microtransactions. Then I have to talk about the Overwatch World Cup because it was pretty damn awesome to watch. The matchup between the UK and South Korea was pretty intense. While we all knew that South Korea would take the cup, the UK gave them some trouble on the second and third map. I mean, even in the finals, China got swept 4-0 to the South Koreans. I mean, UK got two draws, that's pretty cool. Let me know if you watched the World Cup down below, I'd love to know how many of you guys watched it live. Also, during BlizzCon, a new Overwatch character was revealed. Ashes is a DPS character with a pretty awesome kit. Her hip firing slash scoped rifle can deal a lot of damage, but her coach gun and dynamite are definitely the more exciting parts of that hero. She can use the coach gun to knock back enemies or herself to create some distance or to help her reach high ground and it's it goes crazy high, it's like Winston's jump. Her dynamite makes her the second hero with fire damage over time, after Torbjorn of course, and it will open her to some great combos. Her alt Bob also has some pretty cool mechanics like being able to contest points, being healable, nano boostable, and more. The cinematic that introduced Ash 
also revealed Echo, which is likely to be one of the coming heroes. The Overwatch team did reveal that at least six new heroes would join the roster in the coming years, which is pretty exciting, but will definitely be a challenge to keep balanced. Go try Ash out on the PTR. She is available right now and come back and let me know how you feel. And that is pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop me a like if you liked it, a comment if you have something to say. You can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. As usual, those two things. As always, stay frosty and I'll see you on the next one.